Hello, Ken Spriggs here with a short video uh, showing a quick build up of the new 1350 scale Mobius uh, Orion Space Clipper. Uh, primarily because I wanted to show the um, a set of decals that I got from HDA Model Works, some aftermarket decals that provide the Pan Am markings for it. Uh, they have two sets. They have a small set for the 1350. They have a large set for the 172, uh, which I also uh, purchased. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, um, at building that quick model and then using those decals. All right, so I begin working on the 1350 Space Clipper, Orion from Mobius, the new one, the small version. So let me go over a couple of things that I'm doing here that you have to do before you can start putting this together. So obviously the fuselage is in two pieces, just like the other kits. But you have clear parts, so you have the windows for the passenger section, and you have the cockpit window for the cockpit. Let's start with that. This piece was very, very, very challenging for a couple of reasons. So it's very small. Fortunately, you get two of them. I did drop this on the carpet at one point, but I managed to find it. Carpet Monster didn't get it. Damn Carpet Monster. <clears throat> but there is a spare. Luckily, they give you two just in case. And so the issue is that, well, first you have to clean up the opening in the plastic. So let me show you this one. So I cleaned that up. There was a lot of flash on it, so I had to be careful not to dig too much into it, but to get a nice opening on that. And obviously, since you put these together, there's no way to get up in there and put the window in after the fact. So you have to glue it onto one side and make sure that it's straight and then get it. When you put them together, it goes into both sides. Now, these are dark because I have sprayed over some Tamiya smoke to make them look darker. So when you look at it from the outside, once I paint it, it's just going to look like darkened windows. But they're still the, the plastic windows that are glued in. Same with the cockpit. Now the cockpit, it's it's not the clearest, it's not the, the simplest kind of attachment. There is a little groove in there to stick it in. Let me show you the other one. There is that little notch right there. But it's it's not a real easily placed piece that goes in and it only goes in one way and you can tell that it fits in. I had to play with it for several in several ways. Let me show you real quick the instructions and kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so this is really all you have to go by. You see the little window for the cockpit windshield. Now, if you look at that, it almost looks like there's a flat bottom, there's a flat back, and then there's a, another flat part on the top. Really tiny piece, that, that really isn't the case. It's more of a flat back, a flat bottom, and then the rounded curved part for the front of the windshield. But I kind of took from this that when you put it in there, you were sort of angling it. So it kind of looked like, you know, that's how it was going. So when I ended up putting it in, I played with it until it went in well and it had sort of an angle. So if you can see that, the whole thing is sort of slanted so that the back is angled this way, the bottom is angled down towards this direction. And the end result is that you get that smooth, sorry, I'll get that focused, that it fills that gap. That's, that's the important part. So let me put these together and I'll show you. There we go. Okay. So in the end, you're going to get that kind of a look. It fills the window. There's no gaps on the top or the bottom. And it looks good. All right. Now, it's a bit tricky because there's a slight offset on the edges of these when they go together. I tried to trim off one of the pins in the front 
that didn't solve it. That wasn't the problem. It's just the, the tongue and groove that's the issue, I guess. I'm not sure. Because there's a, there's a groove that everything fits into. Not a big deal. Once I get it glued together, I can sand that and smooth that out. But you have to put the windows in before you can put the before you can put the two halves of the fuselage together. In addition, you have to put this piece in, in the back. So I went ahead and painted it black. And the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to use some masking. So I have a um, little mask I made for the engines that'll cover it. Because again, that gets sandwiched in between, so you can't really get it in afterwards without possibly damaging it. Um, and then also what I'm doing is I'm taking some of these little teeny square masks that I have for the giant large pod. And I'm cutting them and making some masks for the windows for the passenger section. And I'm also going to mask the cockpit too. Because before I can do any kind of painting, I have to get this glued together. I have to fix that big seam on the top. And then I have to... Um, and then start painting it. So obviously the windows are going to be installed. I don't want to get those covered up. I want them to stay the dark color I have right now. So I'm just going to mask them off. And then I'll be able to just paint the whole thing. And the same with this piece. Because everything else is just going to be the same color. What I also did was on the, um, on the wings. I painted flat black in those little areas that are supposed to be black. For the intakes and the exhaust. And I did the same on the, the wing tops. So when you put this on. And I did this the same on the uh, the larger version of this clipper when I built it. So when you put it together, you have some nice black inside of there. And I find on the big one, once I paint it, it's not going to get into those little teeny grooves. So those are going to stay darkened. And the same within the back. But I'll just be careful not to paint directly into those, of course. But once I get it painted, it'll clear up any overspray. And I'll have a nice darkened part on the inside there. So... And the same thing. So before I can do any painting on that, I have to get those glued together. So I want it to be black inside. All right. So at this point, I just have to mask off the other side of the windows. And then I will go ahead and get this glued together, start cleaning up these seams. And then once I get that done, I'll be ready to get these glued together as well and put that together. And then we'll be able to start painting it. All right. And here is the completely glued together. Orion Space Clipper. A lot of these glue marks will either be sanded when I sand down the seams or they'll be painted over so it won't be a problem. I have a little tail fin, tail antenna glued on. All right, I'm gonna let this fully set up. I have the windows masked. I still have to mask the cockpit so I need to make a little piece for that that's gonna fit. And then I'll be ready to start sanding the seams. And then I'll be ready to go ahead and get some paint on it. Looking good. All right, so I got a coat of primer onto the ship. I tried to sand down this joint the best I could. I didn't want to go too far because then you start getting it to flatten out and it looks abnormal. And I'm thinking that once I get the white on it, it'll, it'll hide a lot of this. And get that cleaned up. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Now one area that was kind of a problem. And it's kind of badly designed. This part right up here. You can see how it's clearly flattened out. And also the grooves in it are not anywhere near as distinct as the grooves down here around these circles. So they kind of got filled in. Now I was out of my normal primer which I use as the... Um, to me is, um, why can't I think of the name of it all of a sudden? <laughs> fine surface. To me is fine surface gray primer. So I ended up using some um, Rust-Oleum primer, which I like as well. It's, and also because I did want to fill in some of these, these seams a little better as well. It wasn't too bad. I did have to go back and kind of gouge out some of these grooves carefully with a panel line um, tool. Same with these ones right up here because they did tend to fill in a little bit. But not that terrible overall. 
especially for a model this size. The bottom wasn't quite as bad. I, I don't really want to, don't really care to cover up those that line down the middle because it does sort of fill in and look like these are just different panels that would be that way. And the same within the back. This turned out nice. Got that nice and smoothed out. <sighs> Give me this stupid hair on there. Get off there. Okay. All right, so I think that's the best I'm gonna get those seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and mist over some flat white. And I don't wanna bring it up to the final color that I want because I'm gonna miss the final flat white over the decals once I put all those on to give them a bit of a weathered look and blend it in with the rest of it. So I'm just gonna do a light misting, bring this a little closer to a white, and then I'll be able to get ready to start putting on the decals. All right. All right, so I missed it on some flat white to Mia over the whole ship to bring it up close to the white that I want it to be. And it's very nearly there. You can see it didn't affect the little dark inside of these parts, which is cool. Those are still obvious. It's still dark inside of here, but it's not, you know, coming out beyond that. All right. I'm still keeping everything masked because at this point now I'm gonna go ahead and put the decals on. And then uh, once those are all applied, I'm going to mist a little bit more flat white over top of it, just to give the decals just that little bit of faded look that it would be if the ship was in use. It's not a brand new ship. All right. And then once that's completed, then I can move the mass and touch up anything like the black back here, that kind of thing. So as I said before, I'm using two different sets of decals. First of all, the ones that came with the kit. So I'm going to apply all these onto it. And then I'm going to use these ones from HDA Waterworks to put on the Pan, Pan Am markings. And I'll refer to my um, to my previous uh, larger version of this and also to the 2001 the Lost Science, which I will be reviewing, referring to as well that I mentioned earlier. All right. So I applied all of the decals from the kit <clears throat> and the HDA Model Works Pan Am ones onto the model. Uh, really liked the, the HDA Model Works. They went on really nicely. You can see the little Pan Am symbol. Pan Am on the side and on the bottom. Now, not so happy with the Mobius decals. I've had nothing but trouble with these. Uh, they went down, seemed to go down pretty good, but then <clears throat> kept wrinkling, pulling up. I used Walter's Solva set, which typically always works really well for me, and sinks them down. Multiple coats of it, they just would not settle down and I still have quite a few little spots that are just really crappy. Then I went over it with some, you can see right there too. I went over it with several coats of dull coat, flat coat paint. It helped and it got a lot more to settle down, but they're just, they're so thick. They just do not want to respond to anything. I mean, most other decals I've ever used, this much Walters Solva set would have dissolved them completely into nothingness. <laughs> so they are hardy, I will tell you that, but they just do not want to stick down to, to this model. Now, I will say I neglected to get a, a gloss coat or a semi-gloss on the model before applying them. So, you know, I'll give them that. Maybe someone else will do that put a gloss coat and have a better success with it. But but uh, I had no trouble at all with the HDA model works. They went down like a dream. They went down flat. No problem whatsoever. But the other ones were just a nightmare. A real nightmare. So 
I've got them done the best I can get with them. So what I'm going to do now to finish it up is go ahead and mist the light white coat over it, which hopefully will hide a little bit more of these blemishes from the decals. Uh, and then that'll, that'll finish it up. And then I'll take off the, the window masks. I still want to try to use some thin styrene to um, put some window frame bars on that windshield there. So, all right. But anybody else watching, let me know if you've gotten this kit, if you've had the same issue with the decals on here. Um, I had a little bit of problems on the, the original one that I did. But I ended up getting those to, to flatten down really well with the solve set and the, the flat coat. Uh, more so than on this little smaller one. So, all right. All right, and here is the completed 1350 scale Orion Space Clipper from Mobius. There's the windows removed. The cockpit, I did put a little bit of thin styrene, 0 0.010 thin strip to make those little window separations. It's pretty difficult at that scale, but I think it looks okay. The other side, the black between the wings turned out nicely. There we go. There's the bottom. The stand is really strange. I, I tried several ways, could not figure out how to get that notch up in there and to get it to fit in there. I'm not worried about it. It's just kind of jammed in for now and holding it in place. I was mainly doing it to, to be able to paint it. Which it succeeded in doing. So. so the model itself overall was kind of cool. It's nicely done. It's got some good de detail. Very similar design and, and you know construction as the, the other two. Um, not too many issues with that, as I said, other than the seams at this scale are a little trickier. But um, the decal is definitely a big disappointment. I'm not real happy with those and not sure why they behave so badly. You know, certainly if you get this kit and build it, let me know. And uh, let me know if you have the same difficulties. Really happy with the HDA model works. And here's the bigger sheet. For the 172 so same thing expecting these to be really good um i may or may not use these on the 172 only because i know lou dalmasso is working on his masking set where you would paint this on which i think would be pretty cool and the rest of these as well so we'll see but i have some options and these are really inexpensive i think these were like 14 dollars. not bad at all and there's a lot of other things on here too, the other ones, which I would use on it instead of the ones that came with it. I think these would work better also. These ones here. Seat monitors. You got some cabin monitors, some controls for the cockpit. Things like that. These actually go on the wings, or these go on the wings, I believe. So that would be good to use. But definitely recommend the HDA model works decals for sure. So, all right. All right, so uh, I really like the HDA model works um, decal aftermarket sets. I highly recommend them. Uh, they are very cool as far as adding in some quality decals and I've used them before and their products are always very nice. Uh, I don't know if I will be using the 172 or at least all of it. I am looking forward to Lou Dalmasso's uh, Aztec Dummy masking set. Uh, he looks like he's working on a an approach to paint on the um, Pan Am blue and white symbol and also the markings for that as well. So I think that would be pretty cool. Um, but definitely if you're looking to get a good set of decals for either of these, HDA model works is a good is a good source for that. So, all right, um, I am working on my commission builds for my pods, uh, 2001 pods. Uh, once I reach a certain point and get some video on those, I will be going going ahead and uploading a video as well for that in the near future. Thank you to all my new subscribers, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot.